Hi everybody. Um, this is going to be our review video for Module 2, um, Topic A. Um, this topic was all about time and solving problems that have to do with time. So the first skill that we need to master is, is simply telling time, uh, being able to read the time on a clock. Um, so let's go over quickly some of the features that we notice about this blank clock. This clock doesn't have any hands yet. We're going to add them on. But we see going around that we have numbers running from 1 to 12, um, each one at one of these darker ticks, and that uh, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 ticks per each, for each group. Um, one of the things that's difficult about telling time is that those numbers there uh, mean different things. So let's draw in an hour hand here. Uh, the hour hand is the shorter of the two hands, and it's currently pointing at 2 o'clock. Um, so that could be 2 p.m. or 2 a.m., and if the longer hand, the minute hand, is pointing at the 12, uh, the, and we'll talk about why in a second, that means it is 2 o'clock. Um, the minute hand counts minutes, obviously. It's the longer hand. And these numbers refer to the hour. The ticks refer to the minutes. And each of these spaces between the numbers is a five-minute increment. So one of the difficulties with telling time is recognizing that when the minute hand is pointing, say, instead of at 12, but rather if the clock looked like this, where we now see that the hands have moved and the minute hand, the longer hand, is pointing at the 6, um, that, that doesn't mean that it is 206, but rather if we count by 5s, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, that it's 2.30. Here's the other thing that makes telling time difficult. Notice that the hour hand has moved. It's no longer pointing directly at 2. It's now pointing between 2 and 3. Um, I, I have to say that this is a mistake I often see even teachers make when they're teaching telling time. Is they forget to think about that the hour hand moves along just very slowly. And the thing that gets really confusing is this case. This looks like it must be 355, but it's not. The hour hand is pointing almost directly at the 3. Um, I should have drawn mine a little bit better there. It should have pointed a little bit before the 3, but that's okay. It's pointing basically at the 3, and the minute hand is at 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. But it's not 355. That's because the hour hand has kept creeping along, and now it is almost 3 o'clock. When the minute hand points up here at the 12, it'll be 3 o'clock. The hour hand will be pointing directly at the 3. It's a little before 3 o'clock. It looks over here like 3 o'clock, but we know it's a little before 3, so it must be 2.55. People get confused about this all the time, even adults. But always think. If it's pointing at the 3, but it's just before the hour, that means it's almost 3. Because if it was 3.55, this hour hand would be pointing basically at the 4. Um, one more thing you need to know about telling time is to be able to use the ticks in between. So what I'm actually going to do for this is I'm going to um, draw my minute and hour hands as little sticks almost. So let's say... Let's use still time between 2 and 3. Let's say it's just a little after 2, and that's going to be my hour hand. And I'm going to draw a nice, long minute hand that reaches out um, to this first tick past the 3. Now, what time is this? And sometimes on a real clock, the minute hand may not reach all the way, and you have to do your best, but let's see what time this is. So the hour is 2, so it's 2-something. And it's, you see it's actually a little bit past the 2, because that's because it's not exactly 2. It keeps moving on. And we have 2, and then 5, 10, 
15, and one of these little ticks, these little ticks are worth one minute apiece, so it is 216. In third grade, we are going to really push to try to be very exact. We are going to try to tell time down to one minute increments. That's our goal. Um, we've been doing a lot of with five minute increments, but we're also starting to look at one minute increments. So that is 216, and um, that's something you need to be able to do. The other main skill that we need to be able to do in third grade is to not just be able to tell time, but to be able to solve problems that relate to time. And specifically, we're going to solve what are called elapsed time problems. Um, I, I didn't use that word very much in class, but elapsed time just means how much time has passed. So we're going to solve problems where we uh, look at how much time has passed. So I've put two times on the clock, time one, time two. And usually you're going to see this as a word problem. Um, sometimes not, but usually it's going to be a word problem. So this one might be looking at this first clock here, time one. Um, maybe it'll say, uh, Anna and Elsa were playing outside in the snow. And they started playing at 4, whoop, yeah, 426. But in this problem, they're actually going to make you read the clock. So, but I'm just telling you there, it's 4.26. Um, and they stopped playing at 4.39. And how much time were they playing outside for? That could be our question. Um, if I was actually showing you the clocks, they'd probably make you read it. But this is the kind of problem we're talking about. How much time has passed between 4.26 and 4.29? So in our example... Anna and Elsa were playing outside. How long did they play for? Um, it used to be uh, when I was a kid or when your parents were kids or your grandparents or any of your family members who are older than you, probably how they solved this problem was by looking at the clock and, by looking at the clock and figuring out how much time had passed. Um, and that was a fine way to go about it. Um, however, we've learned some new strategies to help us solve this problem. We're actually going to use a number line to help us solve this problem. So I've just added a number line in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to label my number line. All this action happens between 4 o'clock... and all the way over here, 5 o'clock. Now, why did I choose those times? Let's take a careful look. Here's our situation. The problem begins at 426, ends at 439. So, how much time passes? All of the things that are happening are between 4 and 5 o'clock. So, I've labeled my number line at 4 and 5. So, Let's make sure of something here. This number line is representing this hour. And I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 increments, 12 ticks. That matches the 12 large ticks on the clock. And each one of them represents a 5-minute increment. Um, I'm going to go ahead and label those. So watch. Here's five minutes into the hour, so that's 4.05, 4.10. I'm not writing the whole time down, just the minutes. 4.15, Now, I'm tempted to say 4.60, but that doesn't quite sound right to me. When we get to the 60th minute, that's when the next hour begins. So 60 minutes have passed between 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock. That is 60 minutes. But we don't call it 4.60. We call it 5 o'clock. Um, now, how are we going to use the number line here? This seems crazy so far. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on when the action happens here. So time one was at 
26. It's at the fifth increment. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it's between 425 and 430. I need to create some smaller increments here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create four little ticks in between so that I actually have a f five minutes showing there. And the first time that we talked about is 426. And what I'm going to do that is I'm going to plot a point at 426 and I'm going to label it. I labeled it time 1 up above. So I'll do the same there. Time 2 was at 439. That's between 435 and 440. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to carefully create the one minute increments between there. And I'm going to plot my second time at 439. How do I know that's 439? Well, I could count back one from 40, and that's 39. Or I could count on from 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, like so. And after I've plotted the point, I'm again going to give it a name, time two. Now, how does this help me solve the problem, you might ask. Okay, that's a good question. Now the problem's getting a little easier. Um, if I wanted to make it even easier, if I wanted to count on by ones, for example, something I could do is I have this one in between here where the, there are no one-minute increments. I can just add them on like that. And now it's a simple matter of counting on. I could have done that on the clock, sure, but this seems easier to me. Let's try that once. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So that tells me that 13 minutes have passed. Um, there's another way I could approach this, which I like even better. I could think about it this way. Instead of saying, instead of counting on like that, I could take it in hops. I see that there are four minutes to this 30-minute increment. I'm going to write that down and then five minutes to that next one. So I'm adding five more. And then another four minutes. And now I have a simple addition problem. Four plus five is nine, plus four is 13. Just take it in steps like that. And I see 13. Now I have to be careful. Um, I, when I write my answer statement, I actually need to attach a unit to that. So what is this? This is minutes. Uh, we talked about target statements today in class. For the next problem, I'll make sure I write one to demonstrate that. Let's talk about another type of time problem you are likely to see. In this type of problem, you will be given either the start or end time and, being, and be told how long the task takes and be asked to find out the other time. So let's make life a little easier on ourselves and let's give a start time. Um, over here, uh, let's say what our start time is. So let's invent a problem. Let's say that again we have uh, Elsa and she is going to make a snowman. And she starts making a snowman at 2.30. Two thirty. That's kind of a three. Okay. So, first thing I want to do here is I'm going to uh, draw two thirty on my clock. Keeping it simple. There's no reason. Whoops, that didn't quite line up right. To get it fancy, but I do need to be precise. Did you notice there? I made a little mistake, and the first thing I did is I just fixed it quickly. I didn't make my hands look beautiful. Just drawing them in in a precise way that shows that I understand thinking about time. Uh, but I didn't need to make it beautiful. All right, and let's say that she spends, I don't know, how long does it take to make a snowman? Uh, let's say she makes the snowman for 17 minutes. The question would then be, what time is she done at? Now, today in class, we talked about target statements. And I promised you that on this problem, I would demonstrate one. 
So before I do any solving, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a target statement for this question. And for the, I might write something like this. Elsa, it's good to use her name, particularly if you have more than one character, was done at, and then I'm going to leave a blank for myself and put a period. That way, I need to, I'm making sure that as I solve my problem, that when I get done at the end, I have something that fits into that sentence. The target statement keeps me focused. It keeps me looking at my goal of solving the problem. My goal for this problem is to figure out what time was Elsa done. All right, so how do we solve it? She starts at 2.30. I've got that drawn on a clock, and I know that 17 minutes will pass. So first thing I'm going to do again um, is I'm going to label my number line with the hours that are involved, 2 o'clock. The next hour would be 3 o'clock. And I know these are five-minute increments. I'm going to um, use my knowledge of counting on to actually just narrow in on the, the increments that I need. Uh, count along with me. 5, 10, 15, 20, 30. I'm not going to label anything before that because I know that the first time is right here, the sixth increment, 2.30. So this is my start time. I'm going to label it S for start. And I know 17 minutes will pass. Well, I know each one of these ticks, because this is an hour, is a five-minute increment. Um, so there's 5, 10, 15. Um, it'd be nice if it was just 15 minutes she spent on the snowman, wouldn't it? I'd be done right there, and I'd just have to figure out what time is that. Um, I just paused and realized that I made a mistake. I wonder if you noticed it too. See, pause the video right now. See if you can figure out what my mistake was. Well, I hope you found it because I, I started looking and I realized something didn't look quite right about my number line. What the problem is, is let's count along. I made a counting error. I must have done this 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. But I forgot I was counting on. Watch 5, 10, 15, 25, 5, 10, 15, 20. Maybe that's what I did. Maybe I skipped 20. 25, 30. My th whole thing should be shifted one to the right. I'm lucky that I am here on a tablet. And I can just slide my whole drawing over. If I was doing that on a piece of paper, I simply would have erased and started that over. Um, you might ask, Mr. Donovan, why did, why did you leave that in the video? Um, you know, why did you leave a mistake in there for everyone to see? Isn't that embarrassing? No, it's not embarrassing. People make mistakes in math all the time. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. In fact, um, noticing when you make mistakes is what makes the difference between being simply a, a good learner of mathematics and an excellent learner of mathematics. Um, when I started really focusing on the mistakes I was making, making, that's when I started to get better. All right, so let me zoom in here again. Now that I've got that sorted out, let's verify one more time. Now I'm feeling nervous. 205, 210, 215, 220, 225, 230. All right, I'm there. Now, maybe I moved too fast. Maybe I should have written in all those numbers underneath just to be sure. I guess my group counting by fives is not as strong as I thought it was. Um, it's good to know where your strengths are. So I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to put these ticks into the next increment. Why am I doing that? Well, as you remember, we are adding on 17 minutes, not 15 minutes. Something I see all the time with students, wonderful, thoughtful math students, is they do all this beautiful work and then they forget what the problem is asking. I needed to do 17 minutes, so then I'm going to take two little hops, two one-minute hops up to 217, up to, up to 17 minutes. Let's, let's just back that up. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 16 minutes, 17 minutes. Um, so where are we? Let's start adding some on here. Now I feel nervous, so I'm going to actually write these in. 35, 
40, 45, and two more, my end time, that pl plotted point there that I just added on, I'm gonna, well, I should probably label it, let's label it E for end, that's going to be 247. That's the end time. So I can go down here to my target statement. I don't have to try to remember now what am I shooting for. I have it all set up for myself. I can just simply write in 247. If I wanted to draw this on a clock, um, I would put maybe, see, see how it's more towards the 3 because 247 is closer to 3 o'clock than it is 2 o'clock. And then I'm going to draw over there. All right, 247. Um, I would suggest, anytime you're faced with a time problem, if there aren't, for example, clocks drawn for you, to always approach it with a number line instead of trying to draw a clock. I've seen people try to draw clocks. It's really hard. I can't draw a clock. I don't really suggest anyone try. Um, use a number line. Number lines are easy. Um, and number lines will really help us see how much time has passed. But you do have to be careful. Think about the mistake I made in this one and make sure you don't make that same mistake. So one last thought. I just went back and I, I, I watched part of the video again because I, want, I really wanted to know what was my mistake. And I hope that when I was doing it, uh, when you were watching that part, you were screaming at me that I was making a terrible mistake. I jumped right from 20 to 30. And I'll tell you a little story. When I was in kindergarten and I was learning to count, I skipped would always skip over 5 and 15. And I guess I haven't totally broken that habit. For some reason, I don't like numbers that end in 5. And I, I jumped right from 20 to 30. Um, don't let me do that in class. Um, so I hope you caught that when I did that. That, that, was a, that was a silly kind of mistake. And it's just important to be aware of those sorts of things and to always be checking yourself. What I noticed, in case you're interested, um, that, that made me realize that problem is that, that my start time here should have been right in the middle. And I noticed it wasn't because I knew that 30 is the half hour. Um, and it wasn't right in the middle. And that just sent all sorts of alarm bells ringing, and I hope it did for you too. Um, the other thing I noticed while I was watching part of the video back uh, was that my little number line and clocks set up with the differing gray and white background looks like some sort of crazy Halloween face. Well, I hope that you got a lot out of this math video, and I hope that you make fewer mistakes than I do when you're trying to solve time problems. Have a good night.